All right, here is uh, some help with this uh, next test that's coming up, uh, the review sheet that you're using to prepare for this. So uh, let's just get started with these first five problems. We are taking words and we're translating them into mathematical or algebraic expressions. So uh, whenever you see the phrase in number one, less than, that's referring to subtraction. The word quotient is division. So you should always think of the phrase less than or its counterpart more than as being appended or included at the end of the expression. So I'm going to do the quotient of a number in three. That's just really describing division of some number by three and really doesn't matter to me what number you use. So I'll say x divided by 3, and then 18 less than that would just be subtracting 18 from that fraction. So that would be my answer for number 1. The word times, of course, means multiply. Sum means add. So putting it all together, 4 times the sum of a number in 3. So the, the sum of a number in 3 would be this. Now I need to show that 4 is being multiplied to that. Well, as it is, if I just leave it like this, then I'm showing 4 times a number, and then I'm increasing it by 3, or it could say 3 more than 4 times a number. But to show 4 times the entire sum of a number in 3, I need to put parentheses around this sum. Now it's it fits the wording that's being given. So here uh, is a lot like number one. Number one and number three are very similar. Notice uh, up here we dealt with less than. Now we're dealing with more than. So that's like adding nine to something. And what we're adding nine to is 12 times a number. So here's 12 times a number. And then to show nine more than that, I'm going to do plus nine. So that's my answer for number three. Circle my answers. Number four, the difference of, that's subtraction. Nine times a number, we've already said times is multiplication. And the quotient of, that's again division, six and the same number. So I'm gonna be subtracting uh, these two things. So the difference of, now let's see what goes on the left of the minus sign. So here's the difference of, on the left of that minus sign, I'm going to have 9 times a number. And on the right of the minus sign, I'm going to have the quotient of 6 and the same number, that fraction. And then that's my answer for number 4. And then number 5, 4 times the square of a number. Right, four times some number squared, in other words, increased by, that's another way of saying addition, five times the same number. So I'm adding five times that number that I'm letting be represented by x. You could have used any variable. Okay, you'll also be solving some equations. So to solve for number six, I need to remove the parentheses first using the distributive property. So negative three is going to distribute to both of those terms. So let's do that first. 6y minus 5. Negative three times 2y is negative 6y. And negative three times 1 is negative 3. Now I'm going to get the y's on the same side. So I'm going to use that expression kill the little one. The smaller y is negative 6y, so I'm going to add 6y to both sides. 12y minus 5 is equal to negative 3. Now I'm going to get y by itself by adding 5. 12y is equal to 2, and now I divide by 12. And 2 twelfths reduces to 1 sixth. So that's my answer for number six. Seven, I also have to distribute, this time I'm distributing negative three to both of these. So I'll bring down the t, negative three times t is negative three t. 
negative three times four thirds. It's like negative three times four and then divide that by three. So it's like negative 12 divided by three, which is negative four. You should always combine like terms if possible. And we can do that on the left side. One minus three is negative two T. I'm gonna kill the little T and uh, that's gonna be the negative two T. So I'll add two T to both sides. Negative four is equal to four T plus three. So to get T by itself, I'm gonna subtract three from both sides. I'm then going to divide by 4 on both sides, and my final answer is negative 7 fourths is equal to t. For numbers 8 and 9, uh, I think it's helpful to use this technique of PEMDAS in reverse, PEMDAS backwards. So just take a minute, and uh, we're solving for r, so I'm focused on the right side of this equation. And I'm just trying to determine what parts of PEMDAS exist on this right side. So uh, I'm multiplying by L. So I'm going to just put a check mark by multiplication. And then I notice that there are parentheses involved in this equation. So whenever you mark parentheses, don't worry about what's inside the parentheses. Just check off the parentheses and then we'll take care of what's inside later when we get to the end, but for now just save the parentheses part for last. So when I go into reverse order of PEMDAS, that means I'm going to have to undo multiplication first, and then I'll, multi I'll undo the whatever's inside the parentheses will be last or second in this case. Okay, so I undo multiplication with division, so I'm multiplying by L, so that means I'm going to divide by L. Alright, and now I don't really have parentheses anymore. I'm going to reassess. Now I just have to realize that I've got plus 1 here that uh, I need to undo. So the way I undo adding 1 is subtracting 1. This shows minus 1 on both sides. So I have the fraction S over L with 1 being subtracted from it, and that's going to equal negative R. And now um, I don't have positive R yet, but I can either think multiply or divide by negative 1 on both sides. And multiplying negative 1 times the fraction S over L just makes it all become positive. And negative 1 times negative 1 makes positive or plus 1. And then this is going to be positive R. So there's my answer for number 8. Okay, uh, number 9, uh, same thing, PEMDAS. And let's see what, uh, what we have. We have multiplication again, so it looks like it's very similar to the previous problem. I've got parentheses again. And uh, this time, though, I want you to stay away from complex fractions. We talked about this in class. So to make sure I don't end up with a complex fraction answer, I'm going to undo multiplying by the fraction 4 ninths by multiplying by its reciprocal 9 fourths. I'm going to do that on both sides. Because 9 fourths times 4 ninths just makes 1. So it's 1 times x plus 3. And over here, it's just 9 fourths g. And then it's pretty simple to solve for x. I need to subtract 3 from both sides. So my final answer is 9 fourths g minus 3. And that's the answer for number 9. Uh, the next part, uh, we're doing some factoring again. We did some of this on the last test, so just trying to get better at it. Uh, factoring should always start with a GCF. Always ask yourself that question. And if the answer is no, which it is in number 10, there is no GCF, then uh, I'm going to try this method of factoring it as two 
binomials, that means I've got two terms in each one of these sets of parentheses, and they have to be linear, which means I have to have x in both of the first spots, x to the first, and I also have to have just integers, no fractions, occupying these other two spaces. So the way I'm trying to find out what the factoring is, I'm, I'm going to come up with the factors of 24 that add up to 10. Well, let me just give you some examples. Uh, 3 and 8 are factors of 24, but when I add them together, I get 11. So that's not going to work. The combination of factors that does work is 4 and 6. And everything's positive, so my factoring is going to be x plus 4 times x plus 6. Okay, on uh, starred problems like this, uh, you're going to be required to use the box method. So let's take a look at that. 2x squared minus 28. Uh, multiply those together. That's negative 56x squared. And now you're just trying to find the factors of negative 56x squared that add up to positive 1x. And that would be positive 8x times negative 7x. And you put those terms in the other empty squares. Find the four GCFs. So let's go across this way. Uh, the GCF across the top would be 2x. Going this way, the GCF would be negative 7. For this first column, the GCF would be x. And then going this way, the GCF would be 4. And so that gives us what our factoring looks like. These two, 2x minus 7, will go together in a group. And then the other terms, x plus 4, will go together. And of course, if you have time, I would encourage you to go back and check these factoring problems uh, with FOIL. If it's, multi if it's factoring like these, two binomials multiplied together, uh, use the FOIL method and see if you got the right answer. Number 12, uh, remember uh, you should always check for GCF first, and we do have a GCF on number 12, it would be 6. And factoring out 6, we got x squared plus 2x plus 3. And now if I want to see if I can do more factoring, um, I'm going to come up with the factors of 3 that add up to 2. Well, there's only one pair of numbers, 3 is prime, so it only has two factors, one and itself. And uh, we can't add these together and come up with two. So therefore, the only factoring that can be done is factoring out the GCF. And we are finished. 13 is an example of the difference between two perfect squares. So all you have to do here is come up with those two square roots. The square root of 9x squared is 3x. So just write it down twice. The square root of 16 is 4. Again, write it down twice. Give one of those groups a plus and one of them a minus. Doesn't matter how you order those. And there's your answer. That's the factoring of the difference between two squares. So while we're at it, we'll just go ahead and do number 17 because that's the same, same line of thinking. Uh, come up with the square roots. Square root of x squared is x, the square root of 25 is 5. One gets a plus, one gets a minus. And there's your factoring. 14, uh, looking for a GCF, I don't see one, so now I'm going to come up with the factors of negative 12. Uh, let's see, 4 times negative 3, that's negative 12, but if I add those together, I, get, I don't get negative 4. So can't use those. Uh, what about negative 6 times 2? That looks like that's going to work. They multiply to give me negative 12, and they add to give me negative 4. So my factoring then is going to look like this. x minus 6 times x plus 2. Uh, 15 is another box method problem, so let's take care of that. 3x squared, negative 16. You multiply those together. And that's negative 48x squared. And now coming up with the factors of negative 48x squared that would add to give you positive 8. That's going to be 12x times 8 
times negative 4x. Fill in the empty squares. Find your four GCFs. So across the top, going this way, that's 3x. Going this way, that's negative 4. First column, it's going to be x. Second column, it's going to be 4. And there's your factoring, 3x minus 4 times x plus 4. 16. Looking for a GCF, don't see one, so let's see, are there factors of negative 18 that add up to 7? Well, let's see, negative 18 could be 6 times negative 3. Mm, that doesn't add up to 7, and it doesn't help if I change the order of the negatives. Still doesn't equal negative 7, or a positive 7. What about 9 times negative 2? Yeah, that works. Uh, that's equal to negative 18 and adding it equals 7. So my final factoring is going to be x plus 9 and then times x minus 2. All right, and we've already, of course, done number 17. Uh, number 18, this is um, some radical practice. So you might want to consider making a list of perfect square root numbers and then another list for perfect cube root numbers. Um, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36, 7 squared is 49. Um, and just take a look at all your problems. You shouldn't, you, I don't have to go any further than this looks like. So then let's do a perfect cube root list. 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27, 4 cubed is 64, and according to what I'm doing here I don't need to go any higher. So now I have to make an exhaustive list. Um, so uh, what I'm doing here is I'm looking first of all since this is a square root I'm looking to see if 27 is in my list. It's not. So what I'm going to do to simplify this is use a number from the list that divides into 27, and that number is 9. So I'm going to rewrite the square root of 27 as the square root of 9 multiplied times the square root of 3. So far I've got the square root of 27 factored. All right, now for variables, just think of it this way, this 2 that is invisible because it's a square root, it's understood to be 2, has to divide into these exponents. If 2 does not divide into those exponents, then they're not perfect square root variables. All right, so obviously 3 is not divisible by 2 evenly, so what I'm going to do to fix this the best thing I can do to simplify this is to put x to the second here because in this first radical this is going to be the perfects. Everything in this first radical has to have a perfect square root. And then to make it equal to x to the third I'm going to put x to the first over here. So all the while you should check yourself and make sure that when you multiply these two separate red radicals together it equals the problem on the test. y to the 6 is great because 2 does divide into 6 evenly, so I'm going to put y to the 6th in this left radical. It's already perfect. And then z to the 5th, kind of like what we helped, dealt with with the x, z to the 5th is not a perfect square variable, but I can do it as z to the 4th, which is, and then put the extra z over here on the right. All right, and so now let's simplify this left radical. We've got it set up to where the whole thing can be simplified. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of y to the 6th is y to the 3rd. And the square root of z to the 4th is z squared. So we got that one simplified without a radical. And then this right side becomes, it stays in radical form because it cannot be simplified. 
All right. Number 19 is the same type of deal, but you're going to find out it's really nice because 49 is a perfect square number. The exponent for x is divisible by 2, or is divisible by 2, and that's also true for the exponent for y. So for number 19, I don't have to split this up into two different radicals because the whole thing simplifies. The square root of 49 is 7. The square root of x to the fourth is like x to the 4 divided by 2 power. And y is going to be to the 10 divided by 2 power. And that's it. So the only time you have to do this process of breaking it up into two separate radicals is if some of the expression under the radical is not a perfect square or a perfect cube. So number 20 is a good example. Uh, this is a cube root. Uh, 40 is not in my perfect cube root list, but 8 is, and 8 goes into 40 evenly. So I'm going to use the cube root of 8 multiplied times the cube root of 5 to equal the cube root of 40. Now you got to change your way of thinking. Now I'm trying to divide 3 into these exponents evenly. Well, 3 doesn't divide into 8, so the best I can do is make this be a to the 6th, go as big as you can, and then put the leftover, the a to the 2nd, over here on the right. Now the b variable is a different story. 3 does go into itself, so b to the 3rd is what we would consider a perfect cube root variable. c to the 5th, however, is not. 5 is not divisible by 3, so I could do c to the 3rd, which makes this over here become c to the 2nd. So double check yourself. Make sure when you multiply these two radicals together, it comes back to the original problem. And now uh, do the cube roots. The cube root of 8 is 2. So a to the 6 divided by 3 power. 6 divided by 3. a to the 2nd. B is going to be to the 3 divided by 3 power. It's B to the 1st. C is going to be to the 3 divided by 3 power. That's C to the 1st. And then this other radical will have to stay in radical form. Okay, 21. Uh, we're just going to multiply first. And then we're going to do the same routine. So the square root of 3 times 6, that's the square root of 18. When I have x to the third being multiplied by x to the second, I add those exponents together, x to the fifth. And then do the same thing for the y's, y to the 5 plus 1 power. And now I'm back to that same line of thinking that I had before. I'm back to a square root. 18, the number 18, isn't in this list. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a number from the list, 9, times another number that's not on the list, 2, to equal the square root of 18. 5 is not even. An even number is the only type of number that's divisible by 2, so I can't simplify the, x to the, the square root of x to the fifth, so... I'm going to do x to the fourth, that can be simplified, and then whatever's left over will go over here to the right. Now y to the sixth is completely simplifiable. Six is divisible by two, so I'm putting it all over here in the perfect square root radical. So the left radical becomes the square root of nine, the square root of x to the fourth, which is x squared, four divided by two, and then y is to the 6 divided by 2 power. 6 divided by 2 is 3. And then this other radical just stays in radical form. Okay, that's all we have for radicals. Then you'll have some problems that drill your knowledge of exponents. So uh, the exponent rule, when I have uh, numbers that are being multiplied together inside parentheses, and the whole parentheses is raised to a power, then it's really like this. Every 
part that's being multiplied is going to be raised to that power. And if there's already a power showing like this, then that power gets multiplied times the outside power. That's called the power to a power rule. So I'm going to show it like this. First of all, don't forget to raise 4 to the second. Everything in here that's being multiplied separately, there's three different numbers really, 4 and then two variables that represent numbers. All three of them need to be raised to the second. So 4 to the second is 16. I just A lot of people will miss this because they don't raise the number to the fourth power. So in cases like this, when a power is raised to a power, this is when we multiply. It's going to be x to the tenth. And then this is going to be y to the sixth. Okay, now let's do the same thing here. This is 2 to the third power. Don't forget, 2 to the third is 8. When we have a power raised to a power, that becomes x to the ninth, 3 times 3. And then y is going to be to the sixth. 2 times 3. All right, now we're ready to multiply the coefficients together. So 16 times 8. 16 times 8 is 128. And when I multiply the two x's together, I add their exponents. So that's going to be x to the 19th. And y will be to the 12th. All right, so again, same thing here, but now everything's going to be raised to the negative 2. So 5 to the negative 2, x will be to the negative 6. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And then y is going to be raised to the positive 8. Negative 4 times negative 2 is 8. Okay, so i got three different uh, terms here, factors really, but two of them have negative exponents, they're going to have to be changed. All right, so if you want to, you could think of this as a fraction, all of them being over 1. So to change negative exponents, just send them down. So the negative exponent expressions go down, and when you shift them to the other place, then the exponent becomes positive. So I'm just going to show you a little illustration. I'm moving those two down. Y to the eighth doesn't need to be touched. A positive exponent doesn't need to be changed. So this is going to be my final answer. Y to the eighth stays on top. On the bottom, I'm going to move it, make it five squared. Okay, so five to the negative two on top. When I move it down, it becomes five to the positive two, which is 25. X to the negative six was on top, but when I move it down, it becomes X to the positive six. Well, there's your answer for number 23. 24, we're going to multiply these together. So start with the coefficients. 7 times 3 is 21. For the x's, I add the exponents together. So negative 2 plus 5 is x to the third. For the y's, I add those exponents together. 5 plus negative 8 is negative 3. And so kind of like what we did over here on number 23, um, y to the negative third is the only one that needs adjusting. 21x to the third is not moving. So to fix this, I'm going to make y to the negative three become y to the positive three on the bottom of this fraction. Okay, I think we just have one more, and that will wrap this up. A negative exponent tells you to flip the base. The base in this case is 3x to the third over 4. So I flip it over and then change the exponent to positive after you flip it. So everything now inside the parentheses needs to be raised to the second power. So 4 to the second is 16. On the bottom, 3 to the second is 9. And when you have a power, again, when you have a power that's being raised to another power, you multiply, so that makes x to the sixth. And so there's your answer for number 25. Okay, so if you 
understand how those problems work. You should be well prepared for the test uh, tomorrow. If there's anything I can do to help you in your preparation, reach out to me, send me an email or come to academic support. I will see you next time.